It's been a very difficult uh, period for everyone, particularly for the people of Ukraine and for the Russian people, but not only for them. This is a war that never needed to happen. It never needed to be started eight long years ago, 14,000 dead Ukrainians ago. Uh, but it was, and it was a war of choice. It was a war of choice of NATO, led by the United States of America, that encouraged the revanchist, the ultra-nationalist, and even the neo-Nazi forces in Ukraine to lay siege to their fellow countrymen and women and ruthlessly to massacre them. The fact that not a lot of people know that is part of the problem in this story. You heard me famously say some years ago when Israel was invading Lebanon, the clock doesn't start when Sky News turns up. It doesn't start when the twibbons start going up on social media. It starts when it starts. And this started in 2014, when the United States of America, nakedly, brazenly, unashamedly, and now no longer hidden, carried out a, a, a massive and violent coup against the elected government of Ukraine. The elected government of Ukraine and its president were overthrown. Its president had to flee for his life. The parliament building was set on fire, and members of that parliament were at gunpoint forced to sign a raft of laws which made the 30% of their country who are ethnically Russian and speak Russian outlaws inside their own country. The people of eastern Ukraine, of whom I speak, declared immediately that they would not live as hunted foreigners in their own country, and so armed themselves and formed themselves into what they declared were independent republics. And the Ukrainian armed forces, armed by the West, funded by the West, how did Zelensky get $1.3 billion in his bank account offshore, revealed in the Pandora Papers? That's quite a lot of money for a comedian, even a good one. And it's certainly a lot of money for a president who's only been in office two years. Where did he get the $31 million villa in Florida? That's a lot of money for a comic also. But more of that later. This is where this all started. If you are pretending it started 13 days ago, then you are either a fool or a knave. You are either someone who's been deliberately misled or you are one of those deliberate deceivers. And you will be unmasked as events continue to march. This started in 2014, not in 2022, and it's time for it to stop. This war is a bloody one. All wars are bloody. The fact that it's very much less bloody than other wars that we are fighting, actually literally simultaneously, is of course of no consolation uh, to the people who are losing their life's blood in this conflict. Although it is a point worth making, uh, that there are no ribbons for the people of the Yemen who are being torn to pieces by British and American armaments, by the Saudi Arabian and the United Arab Emirates Air Forces with British and American military officers in the command and control centers, guiding the planes that are delivering the bombs that were sold to them by us and are massacring the Yemeni infants, women, old people. I saw a disastrous strike took place in Mariupol today, at least uh, unverified, on a maternity hospital and women and children, no doubt, were maimed and killed in that strike. I'm heartbroken if that is true, literally heartbroken, as heartbroken as I would have been if the Islamist maniac who tried to do the same in the Liverpool Women's Hospital had managed to get through. 
as heartbroken as I was when the hospitals in Yemen were leveled, when the hospitals in Gaza were bombed and rocketed, when the medics were murdered in their uniforms, in their ambulances, in Gaza, over and over again. If you were not one of those who cared about those medics, who cared about those women and children, then you are a hypocrite. You may have the alibi that you're an idiot and you knew none of these things, but if you're watching me, you're on social media, and if you're on social media, then ignorance is a choice. The truth is but a couple of keys away on your keyboard. You may have the alibi that you are an idiot. But on the other hand, you may be one of the mechanized battalion of liars who want people to think that this war in Ukraine began just 14 days or so ago. You may be one of the people who made apologia for uh, the people massacring people in Yemen. You may be one of the Westminster Friends of Israel who say that Israel is only trying to defend itself when it kills medical personnel, patients desperate for cancer treatment across the border who die on the other side of the checkpoint. You may be one of those. How can I tell? But whoever you are, at least you've come here and you're going to hear the other side of the story. First, I want to deal with the issue that I broke to most of you. Some of you already knew, but most of you did not know. In the Sunday Mother of All talk shows, when I broke the story to you that Russia had discovered biowarfare labs in Ukraine, paid for, fully funded by the United States of America. I broke this story to you because it was, I said, a game changer. I broke this story to you because of its almost apocalyptic importance. If there had been no WMD in Iraq, but there was WMD in the Ukraine, and that moreover it was held by a Ukrainian government in the hand of the United States of America. And if it was the United States of America that was paying for the bio-warfare research not far from the Russian border, well, that would be a game changer, would it not? Uh, the chairborne division immediately went to work on me. It was Russian propaganda, they said. It was a lie, they said. There were no biowarfare labs in the Ukraine, they said. For 24 hours, that bombardment continued until Victoria Newland, a name to reckon with in the whole story of the Ukraine, appeared before a Senate committee in Washington. Under questioning from Senator Marco Rubio, Victoria Newland revealed that there were indeed biological warfare laboratories in Ukraine, that the United States was indeed funding them. And in great dread of the Russians getting their hands on them. Well, um, I only have a minute left. Let me ask you. Um, does Ukraine have chemical or biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities, which, in fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of uh, Russian forces should they approach. I'm sure you're aware that the Russian propaganda 
groups are already putting out there all kinds of information about how they've uncovered a plot by the Ukrainians to release biological weapons in the country and with NATO's coordination. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100 percent it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is classic Russian uh, technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. On them. Later, that was amended to, well, they're quite innocent bio labs, you know. They're only researching pathogens, only in Ukraine, only right next to the Russian border, but they're only researching innocent pathogens, in which case, why are you worried about Russia getting its hands on them? If it was research into the common cold and influenza that you were doing, Ms. Newland, you wouldn't be remotely concerned about Russia getting its hands on your bio-warfare laboratories. It is one of the most significant developments of the war and therefore has been virtually completely ignored by the mainstream media blaring out its ceaseless 24-7 twibbed propaganda. If that's all you want to watch and hear, again, I say you're an idiot because even someone that hates me, even someone that hates my perspective on this conflict would be an idiot if they didn't want to hear it. They'd be an idiot if they didn't want to watch it, read it. What kind of people would you be if all you wanted to watch, listen to, and read was the propaganda that your masters wanted you to. Well, I'm sorry to say, you may be an idiot, but you're not alone.